Welcome to Faith on Film. Holly, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy 2023. <laughs> Can you believe I this? I love it. This is the first show of this year. And boy, is it going to be a show. packed field show. It is. In fact, we got we got a lot to talk about. So much so that I've got notes and I've got glasses because that's the way well, it's going to roll this uh, show. <laughs> yeah, that's good. People are going to see me going, you know, looking down a lot. And that's because we have so much. We didn't want to miss anything. So we've got notes for everything. Now, no, I know a lot going on in there. Yeah, but I noticed you are in a whole different location. What, what's going on here? I am, Isaac. I am doing, as well as the other things that I do, I'm doing a radio show <laughs> called Real Talk, Real Talk with Holly McClure, and I tape it right here in Weatherford at this wonderful station, and you can find it on Christian fm.org and this station is christian fm 99.9 so when you go to the website look for christian fm 99.9 in weatherford texas and you'll see my shows well hear my shows it's not seeing it's radio so you'll you can hear it but i've already got some great shows that i've been doing for a few months now and got even better ones to launch for this year so and including one that we had with isaac you and i did a show together so i've got that on there so yeah so this is my studio where i come in and record well, fantastic. This is mine, and this is all I do. No radio show, no nothing else. Just this. <laughs> But you know what? A great way to kick off uh, this new show is, of course, that we're going to give some insight into what exciting things Christians are doing. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, right. what Kurt Cameron's doing, the Kendrick Brothers, and we're going to take a look at an entertainment company from a Hollywood actor who has played mean mean villains and uh, believe me mean. I, I'm, and you I, watch, you've seen him everyone you've seen him yes. you've seen what he's been on he's I'm been doing such it a for fan. you I'm, I'm such sure. a fan and we'll uh and then Holly you're going to talk of course about a few movies that are out right now right Right, including one of the biggest movies, Avatar, The Way of the Water, or Avatar 2, as they're calling it. Mm -hmm. And I've uh, got an insight into that. So, yeah, we've got a lot to cover on this show, Isaac. <laughs> well, that's, that's excellent. Now, let's talk about this one. One of my favorite actors, which is, of course, a great man of God, uh, has, is bringing reformation to the world, basically. And uh, that's Kirk Cameron, who made news uh, a few weeks ago by the fact that he was uh, basically uh, ignored or really rejected by several libraries. I think it was 50 libraries that rejected him coming over and doing a yes. sto story time. Now, interestingly enough, those those same libraries that rejected him were the ones that had previously had Drag Queen Story Hour for Children. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Now his book is As You Grow, um, and in the book As You Grow, and it teaches kids on the Holy Spirit, and as they're growing, right. it's a good book. Nothing in it, you know, crazy. Nothing in it questionable, like you know, drag shows. It would be questionable for children, and yet, fifty libraries turned him down. And then what happened, Isaac? Finally, one library in Indianapolis went ahead and uh, gave him the okay to come and do the story. And guess what? Over twenty five hundred people showed up. 2,500 people. Now, the library says that uh, this message, they, they made this announcement. This is a message to every library in the United States. In 137 years of the Indianapolis Public Library's history, never once have they had over 2,500 people show up to a single event. <laughs> the publication... I Oh, can you imagine? See... Not so to we, a library. <laughs> <laughs> we no longer should be silent and you know that's that's the problem is they we're, we're a uh, a a majority but we are a silent right. majority we we need right. to start speaking up because it will work right and taking a stand for injustice. And what they did to Kurt was injustice because it's not yes. fair. It's one thing if you have a rule across the board, but they clearly were showing they're biased against Christians, biased against conservatives, yeah. and it's wrong. And he took a stand and he won. This set a pace. In fact, he's already booked for other libraries now. They're opening their doors to him because what library doesn't want 2,500 people to come to their library? I mean, pretty good <laughs> publicity for all of them, right? I, so, I, you I, know, absolutely, I, absolutely. I love that. I love that. You know, I wanted to say to you there, I, I looked up, you know, I love numbers and I looked up what God says about numbers and what God said about 2023. And in the prophetic world, the common threads are saying they're seeing a pathway towards the focus of reformation. So 2023, what does it mean? The Lord is saying 2023 is a year to focus on reformation by returning to the word of God and the fear of God. And I love it that you just said this story because this is a perfect example yeah. of someone who's taking a stand and fighting for reformation. Now, not only in our culture, but to get that word of God out there. 
Uh, absolutely. And you know, that that's why I say we, we can't just sit back and let stuff happen. We can't let Hollywood just kind of take over and put out whatever they want to put out. We have to start no. bringing in what we know is, uh, you know, from the word of God. Absolutely. Now, here's something else. Um, another way Christians are taking the stand, and I'm going to read these mm-hmm. stats because I don't have them down. Okay. Here's some ways that they are rebelling, which I love this, <laughs> rebelling against the woke world and against uh, what Hollywood is trying oh, to do. Wow. Okay. And I love this because we, we talked about many of these stories, Isaac, uh-huh. actually. We've covered a couple of these stories throughout what's going on. But here's the way last year, and this leads up to what we're talking about, what's coming out, because there is a change. And here's what's coming mm-hmm. with Christians and what we're going to do in the industry coming out in the next years and few years, actually. Okay. But um Disney. Okay, the first animated film was openly LGBT. Strange World opened before Thanksgiving, closed basically after Thanksgiving. It tanked at the box office. The film had a whopping $180 million budget, but it only took in $24 million, which is not successful in Hollywood standards, in case you don't know that. And it wow. bombed. Okay, and then, and remember we were talking about that, how it was openly mm-hmm. gay and, it, it, with, uh, and crossover uh, transgender uh, characters. Okay, well, Pixar, their latest one, Toy Story Lightyear, we talked about how that failed to meet expectations, earning $51 million at the box office. Mm-hmm. And I think it cost $150 million, Isaac, to make. And it was the first one that introduced a kiss with characters. And they should have known, because from there, <laughs> it went downhill. And, of course, that's when DeSantis, they were attacking him. And so there was a really reversal of that. Another film, um, Bros, that was not animated, but an actual film live action, failed miserably. It grossed $14.8 million. The New York Times said, oh, maybe it's homophobia, because it completely tanked and bombed no it's not homophobia it's we don't want to see that on the big screen no one wants to see it and it's Mm -hmm. not just christians or conservatives i mean it tanked at the box office overall so even the gay community didn't really support it you know otherwise it would have been huge huge numbers according to what they say are the numbers and that they're Mm -hmm. counting on this country so apparently there's not that many out there that support this on film um Movies with an overtly theme like Amsterdam, that was one. I don't know if anyone even knows that film came out. It was with Robert De Niro, his character. He was giving a veiled speech against kind of telling a character like Trump off. Well, it bombed, needless to say. So, yeah, there's a few films that, and there's other things that have bombed, aren't there, Isaac? Uh, yeah, well, I understand even the climate change documentary that, uh, to the end, I think it's called, uh, from Representative Alejandria Ocasio-Cortez. It also <laughs> bombed it. it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, except for maybe right there in her area of New York. Uh, <laughs> now, it made, get a load of this, it made $80 per theater. <laughs> what is that like? 80, 80, I mean, 80, that's that, embarrassing. I'd be like 10, eight, nine people, eight people went, <laughs> went to see the movie. <laughs> and she should have been sh- ashamed and embarrassed. Oh, like, it goodness. should have been a big... It should have been a big news splash making so much fun of her. But, of course, people yeah. probably didn't even hear about it. Well, you know? here, the, the editor of a Hollywood entertainment outlet said projects with woke themes tend to turn away audiences. The American public is increasingly aware <laughs> woke Hollywood projects and often steers clear of them. Now, one project, the Warner Brothers film Batgirl featuring a race swapped heroine got canceled before its release date, uh, despite having completed much of the shoot. Netflix and Hulu also canceled woke shows and defended comedians that have been attacked by progressives hulu canceled its original series literally named woke there's actually a series yeah. named woke. <laughs> and it wasn't popular oh Surprise. my goodness yeah i know and of course uh the, the streaming giant uh did uh, stand up for unwoke comedians like dave Chappelle and yes. ricky gervais understanding their robust ratings see if you go they're on woke, you get you get huge ratings and uh, they're that's starting to realize right. wait a minute that's what we want that's what we want. And did you know that the uh, Batgirl, that movie, mm-hmm. right after Top Gun came out, right after Maverick came out this summer, the head of Warner Brothers canceled it because he said he realized right then what people were paying and wanting to go see and supporting the Americana, the true spirit, you know, the, the men in service in the airport and women in the airport and and uh, the camaraderie in America. They realized his movie didn't have that. And in fact, cost $90 million and he canceled it. He just canceled it, and it was already filmed. So that's how they realize the wave that's coming. So talk about a red wave. I think that there has been a red wave in other ways. Maybe it wasn't politically because of whatever reasons. But we sure saw it at the box office. We sure did. Yes, we did. Now, speaking of box office, uh, there's 
a lot uh, happening in the box office that you're very aware of, isn't there? Oh, that's true. That's true. <laughs> hey, has everyone seen Avatar The Way of the Water? Well, if you haven't, I've actually seen it twice because I went with nieces as well. Isaac, you haven't have seen not, it. Have <laughs> <not>. <laughs> Isaac, are you busy I, with family during I Christmas? What's not. wrong with you? I, I don't know. I just, you know, I find that I haven't gone to theaters as much. I'm watching a lot of movies here on TV, a lot of the Christian movies on TV, and uh, we just haven't gone out. Maybe it's because I'm getting too old. I don't know. <laughs> no, it's okay. Well, there's plenty of time because it's going to be in theaters for a while now. Hey, let's let everybody watch the trailer and I'll give a few uh, facts while we're watching it. All right. Okay. Avatar The Way of the Water it continues to dominate the holiday box office. James Cameron's epic has now hit $1.17 billion and probably even more after this last weekend, becoming the third highest grossing film of the pandemic era behind Spider-Man No Way Home and behind Top Gun Maverick that had $1.5 billion. It now ranks as the highest grossing international release of this year so far. And Avatar cost $250 million to make. So you think, well, they made a lot of money back. Well, Avatar 3, he's already finished that. That's also cost $250 million to make. That's coming out next year, Christmas 2024. And that also costs, when you add them together and what they've spent, yeah, he, he still wants to make about $2 billion to recover the losses and make money on the film. Avatar The Way of the Water focuses on the Sully clan as they face down a set of invaders that threaten the harmony of Pandora, their mystical planet. Cameron developed new technology that allowed them to shoot performance sequences underwater. And in fact, the cast had to learn to free dive so they could hold their breath during the action scenes. Now, he brought back Sam Worthington, Zoe Zeldano, all they had to learn, Stephen Lang, he's the bad guy, and Sigourney Weaver. She, yep, she, everyone's going to say, well, didn't she die in the first one? Yeah, well, she's back as a 15 year old. Uh, you'll have to see it to understand it. And also includes newcomer Kate Winslet, which Kate Winslet had to practice for six months how to hold her breath for five minutes underwater. And she actually had to practice that because they literally had to go underwater to film scenes wow. now here's what i thought was funny um isaac i thought it was funny that she of course was in titanic <laughs> so one of her first big films was with james cameron in titanic mm -hmm. making that movie a ship that sunk in this movie she is there is a ship that sinks and literally <laughs> flips over just like titanic so i'm looking going okay this kind of feels kind of <laughs> <laughs> you know, like you're going back flashbacks because this is what she did before. Oh, so it's funny because she's now in the series and of course she'll be in uh, three and then she'll be in four. So anyway, it's kind of an interesting little insight behind it, but it's doing well and continuing. I liked it. I did like it. The only thing I don't like, and I'm just going to warn people, there's a few religious profanities, you know, sprinkled throughout mm. the, the J and the GD word, uh, just a few, yeah. but it, you know, it's unnecessary, but that's James Cameron and you know, that's what they do. So I, I'm sorry, I'm not condoning it. I'm just letting you know that's in there but it's rated pg-13 folks so i do think it's really for mm, mature 11 12 on up it's not that little kids wouldn't be fascinated but it's three hours and 10 minutes so oh my and your five-year-old sit there for three hours and 10 minutes i don't think so and it's not really for five-year-olds it's got language it's got violence it's got action and there's things that are too much and too big so it's not a kitty film Three over three hours. Wow. Three hours and ten minutes. So wear a diaper and take your snacks. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much could be it. <laughs> Wait a minute. Have you been to the movies with me or something? Uh, no, never mind. Never mind. I don't <laughs> TMI. Three hours and ten minutes. Oh. Yeah, I could. I know it's it's anyway. It's kind of funny, but uh, hey, it's doing well, so we'll see. And that's well, the biggie right. film starting off 2023. And mm -hmm. they're saying that in this coming year, we've got three things to look for. We've got Indiana Jones with Harrison yeah. Ford. They de-aged him, Isaac. De-aged him throughout the whole movie, so he looks younger, like he did as the Harrison huh. Ford that we know. And that's going to be a big one. See. And then, of course. Mission Impossible, Tom Cruise, they're saying that's going to be probably just as big as Maverick because he's got everyone now who loves Tom mm. Cruise, and it's going to be a phenomenal film. So that they're looking to that being their big box office, but we'll see if Avatar can supersede it or not. I guarantee you I will go see uh, Indiana Jones. I absolutely yes. love those kind of movies. Yes, and he, and Harrison Ford, someone asked him and said, well, <laughs> who would you like to replace? Would you like Chris Pratt or, you know, and he goes, uh, no, no one's going to replace me. No oh, one else. Yes. Will be, no one else will be Indiana Jones, <laughs> and so he's very clear about saying nobody's going to come later to play that character. Oh, that's fantastic! 
Uh, so, yeah, it won't be like uh, 007 who had like how many? I don't know, 10 or 12 or I don't and even know. And then he becomes a girl. And then he becomes, yeah, yeah. becomes a girl. And then becomes a girl. Pretty oh, sure Indiana uh, Jones doesn't want to become that. So, yeah. <laughs> or no, trans I would, or something. I would, I would think not. Now, here, this, this story really got me excited recently. Uh, there's an actor in Hollywood who realized that there needs to be a change. Now, I've seen this actor, and, and you'll recognize him. We talked about it a little bit in the beginning of the show. Um, his name is Neil McDonough. Now, he's portrayed numerous movie villains in shows like Yellowstone, which, by the way, I barely started watching. I know. Oh, did you? Yeah. See, I'm, I'm, I seem to be behind on everything. We, we barely started watching Yellowstone, and wow, what a series. Uh, well, anyway. yeah, wow. And he, <laughs> he's, in, he's in season... I think he's in Three, season four. Four? Three or okay. four. Yeah, because I... we just had five and he's gone. So <laughs> the bad right. guy. So I think it was last. I think it was season three and four. Yeah. Well, I just started watching season one. My daughter says okay. that maybe I might actually want to watch the prequel, the first prequel first now that, that they brought it 1883, up. 1883. Yes. And then go to watch season one. So I think yes. that's probably However, where we'll However, in season one, uh -huh. they do flashbacks to that time uh -huh. and reference it. So they do reference it. And this was done before the movie was the other show was filmed. So it does reference it. So it's interesting. interesting. Well, I yeah. loved it just because it's a culture that I've never really been a part of. And just to see that culture, that cowboy culture was rather interesting, especially now that I live in Texas. Even uh, Especially I, now that you're in Texas. I, yeah, so lots of cowboys <laughs> here. So anyway, uh, this, this actor it was on Minority Report. Uh, Band of Brothers, Desperate Housewives. Recently, I believe I saw him in a series that I did watch uh, just a few months ago called Suits, uh, all about uh, yes. lawyers. Oh, he was fantastic on that. He's been I, around, and he, he always has. plays the bad guy. Well, and he plays it well. But he is a Christian. He's a devout Catholic. And as a matter of fact, I, from what I've read, when he... Uh, sounds weird to say when he came out, <laughs> but when he came officially came out, he got blacklisted there for a while. Uh, but anyway, he's uh, him and his wife have decided to launch a film company that is going to be faith based. Now, he said he's not going to make all his movies necessarily be strong faith based, but they are going right. to have a faith background and are definitely going to be faith friendly. There's a guy family friendly, the right faith thing. friendly. Yep. Oh, there is, and he's doing it with his wife. You know, he said for years he yes. didn't have the money to do it, but now that he's done Yellowstone, and Taylor Sheridan, by the way, loved him and brought him on. And the thing that I love about him, Isaac, well, one, several, but one of the things, first of all, he can play an evil guy so much, you just, yeah. oh, he's just infuriating. <laughs> Secondly, he will not kiss women on film. He said he's saving himself for, let me quote it exactly. He said, um, for nearly 20 years, he's been married. He shared that he refuses to be kissing, do kissing scenes with his co-stars because these lips are meant for one woman. He said, I like that guy. Wow. I like that one who stands up for that. Uh, like Kirk Cameron. He's like I, Kirk Cameron. Says I, I was going to say, yeah, Kirk Cameron did the same thing because on the movie uh, Fire. Yes. Proof, now, there was yes. that last scene where they had uh, him and his you know, TV or his movie wife kiss. But it wasn't the, the, uh, the girl that played the, his wife then. They actually brought in his right, his real his wife, real wife. Yes, to do the kissing. They just did a, 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 right. kind of a wide shot. That was that's amazing. right. That's right. That's, <laughs> if you that's have, good. If you I'm haven't seen the movie, yeah. If you haven't seen the movie uh, Fireproof, uh, go check it out now and and look for that last final scene, and you'll you'll see him kissing who you think might be his wife in the movie, but it's really his real wife. Yeah, and you'll see that, and and this, and and for for uh, Neil. Um, do you know where their network is, or do you know how to find it or look it up, or does uh, he have it released? Yeah, he must no, be, because no, I think he, he Yeah, I, I don't know that he's re released. I mean, it's a production company. I don't know that it's going to be a network. It's a production company that will produce movies. Uh, yes. But we're going to stay on that story. And uh, In fact, I really would love to have him on the show. Uh, yes. Since, since I saw that report, I said to myself, i got to get him on the show. So we'd love to have him See on the show. See if we can get him on there. That'd Give be us great. all the information. Here, here's something interesting that he said, though. He said... He, they don't just want to make a movie, but do a movie that actually gives God glory. That's their goal. Wow. From a Hollywood guy? And that's a Holly. I, yeah, that's a Hollywood guy. Is that impressive or what? Well, you know, and there's some other news that you have, isn't there, about uh, the brothers that we know. We know these guys. Yes. The Kendrick brothers. Uh, had them on the show a few months ago. Apparently, yep. they're getting ready to shoot a new film. They're going to produce a new film this year. Now, we don't know what it is. They tend to keep things very secret in terms of what the movie is. They but, don't release but, it. But, really but, yeah, but they are producing a new film this year. 
But even to me, more exciting is this year is the 20th anniversary of their very, very first movie, Flywheel. And I love that movie. It I loved a, it. It was a great movie. I mean, movie. it was horribly made. It was cheapy made, but I love the it story. Was great. It's from what I understand, I think they made it for like 20 grand. Uh, you know, they, they even made their own dolly track, which a dolly track is something that you put your camera on so that it moves. And like you can tell it was like they, they had. They you made, can tell. Yeah, they made their own. But you know what? It was just such a great story. Uh, I remember was. I remember actually crying on that final scene when he started going to everybody to, in essence, I don't remember if it was return their money or, you know, just that, kind of to make amends for what he had done as a car salesman. Yes, so, yes, yes. So the, the exciting news is they're going to re-release it this year. Yay, yay. In fact, they've got several things going on um, that I remember yep. saying. They've mm -hmm. got... Um, They've got the uh, second. Oh, it's a curriculum for college it's students, hard yeah. of a filmmaker. Now that's going to be important for c kids out there who want to learn how to make the movies and do it the Kendrick Brothers way, which they do have a formula yeah. and they did do really well. They're going to teach students what it, what, how you learn to be Christian filmmakers and yeah. what it takes to make a film. And then, of course, like you said, the uh, 20th anniversary of the flywheel. I, I love that flywheel so is. Cool. Gonna, and he said they've got technology to make it look better it and better. to fix it up and make it better so you know they're going in there and tweaking it and improving it and yeah. uh you know yeah now i heard that um he had that alex i think our dear alex had yeah. uh, touch with melanoma and cancer right uh yeah there was a couple of things one of them is in march he uh he actually had a minor stroke now i don't know how i don't know whether minor is not as bad as major I'm assuming strokes are strokes and you just don't want them. But uh, he, he had a yeah. minor stroke. So I, from what I hear, he's doing okay from it. Uh, but he also had melanoma. He had it removed from, uh, from his skull. And, uh, mm -hmm. But the doctor has seen him and apparently has cleared him of cancer. Right now he said he doesn't have cancer. Uh, but, of course, we always know how those things are. So we want to keep praying for Alex to make sure that, yes. uh, that, he, that his health you know, continues to be and good. Just... And just letting you know, you guys, my mother had melanoma, a little thing on her nose, and she didn't really do anything about it. And for two years, she kept picking at it. And it would go a little red dot. Uh, it came back, and for five years, she fought it, and she died of melanoma cancer because it went into her lymph nodes and into her lungs, and it spread. So it is a serious thing. It's not just, oh, you get it removed, no big deal. My son had melanoma uh, internally from a mole on his back, and he almost died uh, at 25 years old. He had stage four and had to go into a clinical trial yeah. which he, in jesus name he was healed and has still stayed healed and has a wife and two kids today which they told him he wouldn't probably live past five years wow. so i have personal accounts with melanoma to say it is not a joke i've had some removed yeah. myself and so good news to hear he is cancer free yeah. that's big news big yeah. news but see, I think that's the problem with like melanoma is you, you think of it as just a little something on your skin. Yes. You know? Yes. Uh, and so you don't treat it as as, uh, as aggressively. And, and yet it can be. Yeah, well, you you've experienced that it will be deadly. It is deadly. But you know what? I love his attitude. I, I yes. think, tell us what he said. I had, the oh. way he looked at it. Because, you know, you think always made movies about being sick and being healed. He's all made all these movies where, you know, the Christians always come out on top. Well, he had experienced this stuff his own self. But I love his words of encouragement for people that are going through things. Yeah. You know what? Go ahead and say what they are because my notes are all over the place now. And <laughs> okay. But well, I, remember, I, I remember reading it that he was just very positive about it. <laughs> he said, God doesn't owe us anything, mm. but he walks with us through the hard days because he's loving, he's faithful. And no matter what happens, he is good and is always faithful and loyal and deserves our praise and worship. He says, I want to keep rolling. And as long as the Lord allows me to, we'll keep serving him and yes. doing what he's called us to do. Is that a great attitude or what? That is definitely a great attitude. It reminds me of the song, In Everything, Give Him Praise. Or give him That's thanks. Right. That's know, right. In, in the and good times and in the bad times. And I can't wait to see how this affects their next film. Because, you know, Alex mm. and, and Steve and his brother always right. use life situations and circumstances to affect what they put in films. So very interesting to see if this has right. any. I don't know what it's about, but we'll see what it is. And it's interesting to see if that'll I, be in it. So, I always, you know. you know, I've been such a huge fan of theirs since Flywheel, actually. Um, yes. As a matter of fact, as you notice here in my office, I've got all their posters. Uh, well, I've got, I could, I, my office got a little smaller now, so I've only got four of the posters. <laughs> and I used to have them all in my, in my home theater. That's <laughs> right. Just, that's I, right. I've just always loved their attitude about filmmaking and about 
uh, why they're doing what they're doing. Right. They, they're, they're, they're not We've doing them. Yeah. We've loved them from the, like you said, flywheel. Wow. And I think TBN was like doing something with that. And then yeah. Alex came up to me and, and said, hey, can I show you a little movie called mm -hmm. Facing the Giants? And I'm like, okay. So I got Paul Crouch Jr. And we were at yep. the Gaylord Hotel in Dallas at NRB. Yes. We went back into a bar in the restaurant area and got a big screen. Yeah. And uh, for, people I haven't heard, for people I haven't heard this story before, Alex goes, well, the bar or restaurant, um, I can go in the back. And we're like, okay. <laughs> so Paul and I went back in the back and there was probably eight people, six people there and we watched it and at first paul was like i'm gonna leave after 15 minutes so holly just next right. minute <laughs> you stay i'm like okay well when it came to the crawling scene both of us were like teary-eyed and he yeah. looked at me and i looked at me and we're like we're staying and it was like from there on in history the next year he was a keynote speaker at so many award shows and just accepting trophies for the best yeah. film of the year so it got, it's good to see the journey that Stephen and alex have taken together uh, yeah absolutely but, you know, Holly, we always say, uh, you know what, what we've prepared here will take about 15 minutes, so then let's talk about something else for the next 15 or so. And so it turns out we just run out of time. I mean, we pretty much only have a couple of minutes left here. And uh, I just wanted to very quickly talk about uh, that, you know, this year we really have some exciting new plans for the show, don't we? We do. We are growing, Isaac. And mm -hmm. thanks to you all out there. Thanks to you guys for going yes. to YouTube and hitting that subscribe button and helping our viewership increase. And thanks for making comments on Facebook and Instagram Very and important. supporting us. And we just really appreciate all the outlets and networks and stations that carry our show. We are so grateful to you and to them we for allowing us a little idea that Isaac had a couple of years ago and it's grown now. And we are just blessed that you guys are wanting to have us and do more. So we're planning big things aren't we Isaac? uh big things anything from attending uh you know red carpet premieres uh, whether you attend holly or we send somebody but we want to make sure people uh see what's going on there especially movies that are good for us as christians That's and right. if, if there's more christian uh, red carpets we definitely mm -hmm. want to attend those um a lot more uh guests that we'll be looking for uh, especially maybe some hollywood guests i think it's time we bring in That's some right. hollywood guests that are christian so that you can see that there are christians out there in hollywood like neil mcdonough um and i see what else oh yeah i also in holly uh, this is like i think i've mentioned this to you but i want to do some live shows some live events because this we tape and then it goes out some people don't get to see this to like to right now what we're doing for two to three weeks i want to do some live things so that if something is happening out there that we're like we got to let the people know yeah just go, go live on facebook people can even comment live as we're doing the show so that's another big uh just uh, uh idea that i have that i think would really be uh absolutely fun fun, fun to do Absolutely. Well, we, you know, we've got a lot of exciting things happening that, and God blesses this show and, and it takes us and has prospered us and taking, like I said, yeah. even more outlets. And we're so grateful. Absolutely. So we appreciate your support, everyone. We appreciate you supporting us. Please continue to, you know, go to, like I said, YouTube and subscribe, hit the subscribe button and um, let us know what you think. And if there's something you want us to do or cover, email us and let us know. We'd love to hear from yes. you. Yes. Yeah. You can email us at faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. That's faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. And of course, you can always follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Faith on Film TV. Holly, we have finished our first show of the year. Yay! I wear my blue, my New Year's Eve blue, so to kick it off, yay, 2023. Uh, I, all I have was this right here. <laughs> <laughs> See, we're matching. See? I, I was hoping I'd get one of those blues, lines. but I didn't have any. All right, Holly, we'll see you next week, folks. We'll see you next week as well. God bless. God bless.